spider needs a black cat. <laughs> uh, well, it's a full house of ladies. Yay. <laughs> Uh, let's start with you, Alexandra, as the writer. Uh, what inspired you to write this story? Um, a nightmare. I oh. dreamed that something like what happens in this film happened to me and turned to my partner in the morning and told him about it. And he very excitingly was like, I think that'd be a cool horror movie. And so uh, Nick and Tosca, who's now my husband, and I collaborated on the story. And then I wrote a script that uh, found its way to Blumhouse and the Into the Dark family and Hulu. And uh, now I think fits pretty well with the Valentine's Day holiday specificness of it all. Uh, though it just sort of started as a, a way to look at what can be really scary uh, about intimacy and getting close to a new person. Very much so. What a way to remind people to be alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for you, Clara, what was a scene that you found uh, excited to just shoot? Oh, I love this question. Um, also, just really quickly, Allie, I've heard you tell that story that this was a, a, a nightmare. Were you the Sam or the Tara in your nightmare? Ah. What do you think? I, I, would, I always pro project the Tara, but were you the yes. Sam? I, I was I was Tara. <laughs> yes, of course. Sorry. OK, Nancy, thank you. I've been, I've been dying to ask that question. I should um, make that clear. That, <laughs> or not. Leave it ambiguous. Mm -hmm. um, scene that I was dying to to make that doesn't give anything away to your audience. That's the thing. Cause there are definitely things later in the film that I was very excited about. Basically anything that might incorporate visual effects really excites me because it's, I just, I just like playing with supernatural elements. I love just seeing, pushing the medium as far as it can go. Mm -hmm. But I was actually very excited about the intimacy scenes in this piece because um, everyone on the team was, was on board with the approach of having them not just be your typical heteronormative you know, like culminates in the male orgasm kind of thing. And to show a side of intimacy that felt a little bit more female focused, a little bit more nuanced. And, you know, I knew those were going to be very technical, very complicated and very loaded scenes. And frankly, the more complicated something is, the more technical it is, the more I tend to love it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you touched on one of the shots that I thought was fascinating where, you know, you have them, you know, you know, um, having, sex, making love, but the, the, the shot was just like the ongoing twist. I was like, wow, like I was like, that was very creative because it also tells you how um, connected and how much the couple developed. Yes, for thank you for- A couple of seconds. Ah, music to my ears, Nancy, yes. That was the hope, that was the hope. And it was, I mean, speaking technically briefly about that, that was one of my favorite things to bring to life that I proposed early on, because we knew we were going to have to do a special lighting rig to, to imitate the sun's motion, right? The, the creeping of the shadows across the scene. And I'm just so pleased with how it came out. And I'm so moved that Dana and Casey trusted me to do that because it was a big, it was a heavy lift for, for the actors. For sure, yes. Uh, let's move on with you, Dana. Um, let's tell me about the scenes that you, uh, you were looking forward to, to shooting as well. Um, all right. Without giving too much away, I really had fun shooting uh, Tara and Sam's final scene um, before it fades, like before it cuts to black. Uh, that felt, sorry, I hope that's not boring to the people who haven't watched the movie yet. But the last scene of Tara and Sam, where it's this like highly tense, push pull, super physical, um, and for me, uh, this this whole embodiment this whole like juice up uh transformation for Tara um was so thrilling was such an adrenaline rush um to shoot and so there's that on one side which was definitely um quite physical and then as Clara was saying on on the other side like the physicality of the intimacy scenes um I was a little intimidated at first but as soon as we started uh I was so in it. It felt like all the pieces were perfectly aligned. I actually don't think I've had that level of like creative flow in a scene more ever than I did specifically in the one 
in the like mutual masturbation scene, I guess, without giving too much away. Um, just, it was me and Casey alone in that room. Like that's how it felt. It felt so intimate. It felt so real. Um, that's why I do this. And I'm, I, that was like the moment. Um, I didn't expect it for that scene, but when it happened, I was really, really, really surprised and delighted. <laughs> Great. And for you, Casey, uh, you get to play Esther, the best friend. Yeah. Unconditional best friend that's there to support. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about your character for people that will be watching? Well, yeah. When I first got um, the role, I was really excited about playing it because I feel like I am kind of that friend to a lot of, of my friends in real life. Just kind of being that internal compass you know, when your friends are into a relationship and they can't really see what's going on and I'm just using my intuition, you know, without little details, it's just, it just doesn't feel right, you know? Um, so I think that Esther is really important to the story and um, I, I was really excited about playing that character and uh, grounding Sam and, you know, and also that internal battle that I was having, you know, because I've, Sam, is, I've been close to him for this long. And when our friendship became, you know, when Tara entered the situation, it just, it started to change and our friendship became, you know, it, it was threatened. So just learning how to deal with those emotions without, you know, coming off as that person that's trying to control or change something, you know, it, she's, she had a lot of things going on. So I, it was fun to explore all of that. <laughs> I can relate. I have a guy, like guy best friend. So when a girl comes, it's like, okay, well, we gotta be supportive. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I, I had a really close guy best friend and he got this girlfriend and we're no longer friends now because she didn't like the dynamic. You know, she felt, you know, it's, it's sad because it happens all the time. It's like, I, I, it's not like that, but I mean, in this case, it's a little different, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, yeah, it's, it's something that I feel like the viewer could really relate to. For sure. And then just real quick for all of you, and we could start with you, Casey. Um, what do you say you'd like the most of this modern horror films now to the classic horror films? Well, I feel like horror films now really touch on um, like the things that people are really afraid of in this day and age. Uh, I think people are being really creative with that and um, really getting to the psyche and like what's really terrifying to a human, like what are our fears? Like, and I feel like when we get to know our fears, we get to know ourselves more deeply and intimately. So um, yeah. Good. <laughs> what about you, Dana? That's a great question. Um, I would say that I like the direction, as Casey said, like towards the psychological and away from the camp, but I do um, also have a soft spot for some of the campy stuff. Um, but I, I guess to get into something that scares you, uh, that's close, that's close to your life, that can kind of get into the marrow of uh, who you are, who, who you're with, um, you know, that's true in, in this film, for sure. We've all had relationships that touch on what Tara and Sam have. Um, and I love, I love a slow burn. I love like something insidious and not, uh, not super campy, something that sort of as Ali has, has said in previous interviews, um, lives very much in the world of the real until it crosses that threshold. And that was really fun to explore with tentacles. And for you, Clara? Yeah, I mean, I, I would still resonate with, with Casey and Dana's answers. What I would think to add is just that as cinema matures as an art, because it's one of the, it's the youngest major art form, right? It was only born essentially around 1900. And so we're, as, as it matures, it gets more complex. And I love that, I, especially when it comes to American horror, because th there's just, horror is being allowed to be other things now in a way that it didn't get to be before. You know, when I think about a lot of the films that influenced me and that influenced this film, 
I'm thinking usually of like Eastern European cinemas, like, or, or, you know, like Tarkovsky and things that already played in multiple genres. Now I feel in America, you get films that are really kind of pulling from every genre and being like, I don't have to be on a binary. I don't have to either be horror or not. I can bring these romantic elements from here, these thriller elements, these psychological, these comedy elements from here and make something that's new because that's what is required as you evolve an art form. That's what excites me for sure. And for you, Alexander? Uh, I love classic horror movies. I felt really inspired by them writing this. I think my answer is just simple that more people are getting a seat at the table to make horror movies. And we have amazing films, obviously, like Get Out, um, but Culture Shock also, um, which is part of the Into the Dark family and just a bigger variety of perspectives. And we have a wonderful director who happens to be female and a female driven story. And a lot of my favorite films of the last few years fit that bill from, you know, Babadook to Revenge to um, Raw, which Clara had uh, the cast watch and, those are those are some I want to see more movies like that. Great. I'm um, going back with you, Dana. Um, in this film, I mean, we're watching you and you we're feeling for your character. And but then it's like, what? How how do you how do you focus on getting making that transition and pulling the audience? It's a great question. Um I leave a lot of that up to Clara. <laughs> um, no, I I think that um, you want to, you know, as an actor, you want to have the audiences um, feel what you feel and and see what you see. And I think from Tara's point of view, she uh, this is her nature. This is inescapable. It is the uh, inevitable inevitability of every relationship she's been in prior to this one. And um, there's something that isn't necessarily like hateful about that. It's, it's part of who she is. And maybe she has her own internal conflicts about it in regards to her, her love for Sam. Um, and I think through that, which is something I was going through, I was processing in, in taking her on I would hope that audiences are sort of on that journey with her and with me. Um, so it's not so much of like planning in advance how uh, she might be perceived by the viewer, but really if I'm immersed fully in um, an, a deep understanding without judgment of her point of view and of what she needs, then um, the audience will sort of be compelled to uh, go along for the ride, so to speak. Gotcha. Uh, final question, one answer, um, simple question um, for all of you. You have to share your classic horror film. Like yeah. favorite, classic. Favorite? Your one favorite, all time favorite. Allie's gonna take mine. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that this is a horror film, but, but Vertigo is one of my favorite movies. But I mean, which it feels very appropriate for this movie, but my favorite, favorite movie of all time is The Shining, so. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I don't know if this, this isn't horror, it's more of a thriller, but uh, Fatal Attraction. Oh. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. These are all good ones. Um, I, I, any Hitchcock, really. It, Hitchcock feels, I know that's reductive, but Hitchcock feels really compelling without um, being too scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, except for I guess Psycho. Let's go with Psycho. Uh, I saw it earlier, right peak, right before COVID hit. I saw it at the uh, Lincoln Center with the Philharmonic, and that was so. Yeah, that was a good experience. Good, Clara. Anything you want to? I mean, I was gonna say Vertigo because it's probably the one I've seen the most. But what I will say, because it was already said, is probably like Zodiac. I'd say Zodiac really blew my mind when I saw it. That's a good one. Game for me. Yeah. That made me, I think Rosemary's Baby is a big one for me too. Oh, um, yeah. Repulsion. Repulsion. Oh, yeah. Blasky. We just watched Nancy. Blasky's uh, Macbeth <laughs> last night, and it's long, but it's very compelling. Whatever. We shouldn't be talking about Polanski. 
<laughs> well, thank you, ladies, so much. Uh, congratulations in, into the dark tentacles, and people will be watching. It's going to be perfect for Valentine's Day weekend. Yes. Thank you so Thanks, much. Nancy. Right. Thank, you. thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.